I do not have a PowerPoint as uh, Lawrence was saying that he doesn't have a PowerPoint because he doesn't have power. I don't have PowerPoint because I don't have points. Uh, the, uh, I just, uh, I work for an organization called uh, Selco, which I joined uh, in 94, and that's been my only experience, uh, I would say. Uh, working mostly, uh, as an organization, we mo work mostly in the field of uh, decentralized solar, for providing solar energy to underserved households, mostly in rural uh, Karnataka. And basically to destroy the myth that everybody says that solar is expensive um, and can't be maintained by the maintained by poor people. I think it's it's a big myth. The people who talk about solar being expensive are people who have choices. Choices in the country that where we enjoy the subsidized electricity by coal fired plants or micro or by hydro without realizing what is exactly that we pay the coal miners in Dhanbad. Basically the poor in this country are subsidizing our electricity in many ways and we are enjoying the subsidized electricity and then on top of it we say solar is expensive. I think we need to reevaluate ourselves of what it is to a choice of, about our, if we say that after 65 years of independence that still we have half our population without electricity, are we so proud about our 8% growth? And also this whole last week's debate about how in, in a matter of week that we have reduced our poverty by 15%. Uh, and I don't know the, you've seen uh, Lawrence the last in the planning commission in the last one week we have reduced our poverty by by 15 percent by by debating whether 33 rupees a day is poor or 34 rupees a day is poor and and and, and that's this is if we are involved in this debate and we have half our population that without electricity is something that is so critical to all of us that we have to realize that energy access to the poor is as important as anything else, which basically defines the social fabric of our society in many ways. If you map the ener if you map the violence in the world, and if you map energy poverty, it actually maps very very closely. You're not giving equal opportunities to people to study, to generate income, to have other livelihoods. You are going to increase frustrations in this country. Anywhere, if you look at Afghanistan, if you look at Pakistan, if you look at any other parts in, uh, in Africa is a lack of energy access. We can keep talking about resources like coal and nuclear and everything else, but if those sources were so economical and viable, then why it has taken 65 years to even not provide electricity to half our population? Simple status, simple economics. Let's let's. I'll not come from an environment perspective, but let me talk from an economic perspective. You know, as you go deeper into the economic strata of our society, let's talk about society, the cost of energy actually increases. The average expenditure that a street vendor in Bangalore does is 15 rupees a day on kerosene, which is 450 rupees a month. You and me don't spend 400 rupees, 450 rupees a month. Forget a, 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 a kerosene light. She spends 450 rupees a month on kerosene lighting. So if you had four lights in your house, it's equivalent to 1600 rupees. An average community in, in Bangalore, in, in Karnataka, which does not have electricity, the poor who earn between 1500 rupees to 2000 rupees spends in Karnataka, which is called one of the modern states in this in this country, 10 to 12 percent. It's between 140 rupees to 200 rupees on energy. That's kerosene, candles, and charging the cell phone. And a typical charge for a cell phone when they don't have electricity at home, they have to go to the nearest town and charge. It comes to five. You go to anywhere where you where we, we, we look at plug points in the airport or railway stations and we get our phones charged freely. The poor spend five rupees per charge. You go to a local pawn shop and say, I want to charge my phone, he'll charge you five rupees. Typical, the poor charge eight, eight charges a month, that's 40 rupees, not considering the cost of bus charges. That actually they go to the town to actually average out per charge, it comes to 13 rupees. Kerosene in candles, 140 rupees a month. Mobile charging another 40 to 45, approximately 200 rupees out of their 1600 rupee income goes for energy cost. Now you tell me what is expensive? Having electricity through coal which they don't have, or nuclear, or providing with solar which would cost them equivalent. That is, if they pay 200 rupees to a bank over a period of five years, they get an asset. If you look at 200 rupees today, it's approximately 2,500 rupees a year, which is 12,500 rupees in five years. For kerosene, candles, and mobile charging, is 12,500. 
500 rupees. A solar light with two lights and a mobile charger costs around 7,000 to 8,000 rupees at an interest. I'll, I'll talk about the most expensive system. At an interest at 14% what the Grameen banks charge comes to around 9,000 rupees. Now tell me, is solar expensive or not having solar is expensive? I think we so-called educated class have to bear the perspective about whom are we deciding for. The issue in our country mostly has been that we decide for people who don't have voices. We decide for people who we don't consider them as partners. How much of us our time when we decide, oh, this is a technology, how much of our time that we have actually spent time with people as partners? And, and say that, okay, this is a need. Today what is happening is everything that is urbanized in terms of technology is being reformatted so that the rural people can use it. How many of us actually spend time? How many of us engineers, technology guys, spend social engineers spend time in the rural areas and say that this is what the need is and can I now design a solution according to what the need in the rural area is, not taking a vice versa saying that I have designed this technology, I'll now go and find out what the, what the problem is. So we all decide solutions and then we decide the problem. I think we need to spend time in the rural areas how many, of what it is. Do we actually know what is the color of a light that a tomato vendor wants? How many of us actually know why a tomato vendor will never buy a yellow light, always buy a white light? Why does a potato vendor will never buy a yellow light but always a, uh, will never buy a white light? These are issues. Why does a paddy farmer actually only wants four hours of electricity average in all the four, four rooms? Why does a peanut farmer can only pay twice a year? His cash flows are twice a year. Sugar pen farmer twice a year. These are needs. That's the whole beauty of this country is that the, the, the rural areas will shift the way the business modeling in the world will happen because you look at 550 million people without electricity, 700 million people using un, un, dirty fuels to actually do cook stores, different uh, uh, business models will arise from this 650 million who will then teach the world that how can, need, how can the world sustainably grow balancing economic, financial and environmental sustainability. I think we, we need to relook at what technology is, we relook at business models, relook at financial models in the rural areas, spend more time and looking at what is actually needed in the rural areas and then tailor make those solutions. And that's why India is such a paradox country of between an overdeveloped and an underdeveloped that we have a chance to prove to the world that how we are able to remove poverty using sustainable energy, showing to the world this is actual what growth is. Rather than hiding behind the poor, polluting as much as we can as rich people, poor is earning more than 30,000 rupees, is considered rich, and show to the world this is sustainable development. And solar or pico hydro or decentralized power makes so much of economic sense to this country. If you look at average transmission and distribution line problem uh, of losses in, in the state of Karnataka alone, it's between 20 to 22 percent officially. On top of it, you have inefficient industries. The amount of energy that we lose just by production and transmission, forget the inefficiency of the machines, who is, who is calculating the economic loss of all that? Decentralized energy makes so much of sense. On a positive note, we also have to realize that the state of Karnataka, I'll tell, uh, because we are in Karnataka, has more than 400,000 households, 4 lakh poor households run on solar, sustainably where they have all paid for it without subsidies all done by bank, financed by gramina banks the four gramina banks the tungabal sorry the pragati gramin bank karnataka vikas gramin bank uh, the krishna gramin bank and mysore uh, the uh, Ka the kaveri kalpataru gramin bank all are financed more than 4 lakh households in the state of karnataka without subsidy of solar and 60% of these households never had electricity below 40% which is more interesting of households already had electricity, our poor households who actually went for solar because four to six hours of not having electricity in the evening was the most expensive time where a child could not study. So can I have solar light so my child can study so she or he does not have to go through life that I am going through. If you look at Pinya, that's why I say some of our clients are beggars in Pinya. They beg in the chalkies. They have put in solar saying that I don't, my kids, I don't want my kids to actually beg in the future. So I want solar, I'll pay for it, please give us the Syndicate Bank of Kenya actually finance these beggars to actually buy solar. Now if beggars can buy solar, 
it's a shame that we all have to then say solar is expensive. I think we need to remove our urbanized thought process, travel a bit more into the country, look at the needs, and then design technology and finance. And, and for me, for over the last 20 years traveling the rural parts of India is that, frankly, I, I don't I, whether any degrees matter, because I keep telling Lawrence that uh, if I do a PhD in, in, in sugarcane, I will be called a sugarcane expert, while a farmer who has been doing 35 years of sugarcane will never be called an expert. <laughs> so these degrees are of no use, what we talked about, I think, and especially to the young youngsters is travel in this country, because I feel ashamed to tell you that in my company when we last year got internships, we had 300 applications for internships, five Indians applied to actually work in rural India. Just to again enter it, that sustainable energy makes so much of economic and environmental sense. Let's actually do it for the sake of this country in a positive manner rather than just keeping sitting in our cells and saying it's expensive. Go out and travel, you'll find it's actually not expensive, it makes sense. Thank you very much. Sure.